So I asked some of my teacher friends here in America on what they do on the first two weeks of classes. And guess what? They're very similar. <laughs> What is up YouTube? This is Keith, your casual teacher. As you can see, it's a different setting. I'm actually in my classroom right now, so I'll give you guys a quick tour. As you can see, there's nothing really in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's very bare right now. I actually didn't change most of the decorations that I have, so some of the stuff that you see before, this one right here, the decoration, the tree one, I've had this for three years already. <laughs> And the posters that I have here, I bought them in one of the stores here in America. It's, it was a teacher store, I forgot what the name was. Okay, never mind. All right, let's get down to business, everyone. The first two weeks of school is very crucial because this is the time where you meet the parents, the students, and the community. This is also the time where you establish your rules and expectations in the classroom. Whether you want your kids to see you as very strict and uptight or very chill and laid back, it all depends on how you act on the very first week or the first two weeks. That's what they say, first impressions last, right? Just a quick disclaimer though, the outline that I will be showing you is based on my experience and the experience of some of my friends here in America. So it does not represent the entirety of the school here in the United States. Alrighty, so one thing that you have to understand is that different schools have different starting days. Most public schools start in the middle of the week, let's say on a Wednesday or on a Thursday. Some private and charter schools start on a Monday or a Tuesday. But almost all teachers that I ask give me the same answer on what they do in the first two weeks. Alright, so let's look at my calendar here. Usually, your Monday and Tuesday will be all about PD and classroom prep. PD is professional development. So this is when you talk about classroom management, syllabus making, grading system, IEP, 504, all this good stuff. So it's kind of like an in-service training for those who have worked in the Philippines before. For us here in EdKey and Chorus, we had our PD two weeks before the start of class. That is to give us more time to prepare for the classroom and for the lessons. It was pretty cool actually because we had the option to choose which PD we will attend depending on what your need for yourself. We did our PD in one of the universities here in Arizona, which is in Grand Canyon University. It is very personalized and you won't be forced to listen to a topic that you are not interested in. There's also free food, so you know, good stuff. Why am I sweating so much? It's so hot in Arizona, guys. You will also meet the parents and the students in one of these days or one of these nights, I would say. In a simple gathering, which what we call as the meet the teacher night or the back to school bash. Students and parents will come to the school to meet the parents at around 5 to 8 p.m. You get to talk about who you are, where you're from, your experiences, etc, etc. You know, it's like an informal conversation with the parents. Here's a quick tip for you guys. If there is something that you want for your classroom, say you want more markers, and believe me, you need more markers. Especially if you're a math teacher, you get to write a lot, so you need more markers. You can actually hand out something like a list or a wish list, which you can write on a piece of paper. You can ask for something that is not expensive, but you need a bunch of. So now comes the start of the class. For this day, I suggest you establish the rules and expectations for your classroom. One strategy you can use is to ask your kids to help you establish those rules. This is actually a great strategy for classroom management. I actually made a video about it, so if you haven't watched that yet, you can watch it after this video. It's right here or here. You know, just plan something that will allow you to get to know the kids even better. You know, you can play games with them, like Kahoot, which I actually made a video about, or any activities that will let you and the kids get acquainted. Acquainted. Now, you have the option to spill this until the next day, or if you're done with those kind of activities, you can go ahead and give the students some sort of a bridging activity or a review. You know how kids are, right? If they're from the vacation, they usually forget what they learned the previous year. For example, if you are an ELA teacher, you can actually give them a short story to read and then ask them to share what interests them the most about the story or maybe something that they dislike about it. For math, you can give them some sort of a puzzle. What I usually do is I give them Sudoku puzzles. Basically anything that will, that I swear to God, it's so hot in here. 
basically anything that will let them think harder. All right, so that is usually what happens during the first week. If you notice in my thumbnail, the next Monday is actually where the classes begin. From here on, you will be teaching the core content and the standards. Now, some schools will have benchmark tests during the second week, so make sure to check with your school. Benchmark exams are exams given to students to check the level of their knowledge on that particular task. One thing that I would suggest you do, though, is to give feedback to parents at the end of that week. You know, write them an email or something that informs the parents about how the classes are going, how their kids are in the classroom, any major updates for your class, and stuff like that. The parents will absolutely love you for it. In the next video, I'm going to help you navigate through difficult conversations. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when that video is up. This is Keith, your casual teacher, and I'll see you there. Peace.